Hi, let's talk about the cash conversion cycle. In order to use the cash conversion cycle, you first want to make sure that there are five particular rows on your financial statements. Cost of goods sold and sales. But we also want to make sure that we have accounts receivable, inventory, and accounts payable. I'm going to hide the rows in between so I don't make you seasick with so much scrolling today. And now we can see only sales, cost of goods sold, accounts receivable, inventory, and accounts payable, the five that we need to make these calculations. So the first thing we want to think about is if we buy something on credit, how long before we have to pay for it? Let's calculate my accounts payable in terms of the cost of goods sold. If I take cost of good, if I take accounts payable divided by I'm going to put a negative sign in there because we show this cost of goods sold as an outflow. Then it says I have about 14% of the annual amount of cost of goods sold tied up in accounts payable. That means at any point in time I have a little over 14 or I have about 14% of a year's worth of goods that I haven't paid for yet. I've received them and haven't paid for them. 14% of a year is not helpful, but... Divide that by 365 and it's 50 days. That is helpful. That says on average it's taking me 50 days to pay for things that I've already received. And then how long do I take them, keep them in inventory? We could use the same approach and say this inventory account divided by however much I paid to fund it divided by 365. Let's get those parentheses correct there. Let's put that negative sign back in for the cost of goods sold. This says that on average, I'm keeping my goods in inventory for about 100 days. Now let's think about how long it takes to get paid for them. If my account's receivable, this time I want to divide by sales because that's the amount that I'm getting paid. Divided by 365. It says it's taking me about 15 days to receive payment for what I've sold. So what I really care about is how long am I out the money? I'm not out the money when I get the goods, only when I pay for them. So if I take when I pay for them, the amount of time they're in, in inventory, uh, plus the amount of time it took me to receive payment after I took them out of inventory, and then I can subtract off any days that I drug my feet on paying for those goods. And I find out that my cash conversion cycle number is 65 days. That's helpful to know, but it's not super helpful. It would be more helpful to know what's my average spend per day on goods. That's going to be my cost of goods sold over a year divided by 365. And then how much working capital do I need to, fi to finance 65 days worth of my average daily spend. That's $59 million. That's very meaningful. And it represents the working capital required to do this financing. I'm going to unside, unhide some rows and find out what my cost of debt is. I see that it's 7%. And so if I'm carrying an average balance of $59 million at an annual cost of 7%, it's going to cost me $4 million a year just to pay the interest on that working capital, not to mention what other good I could have done with that capital. I'd like to copy this across and see how it changes each year. I can copy paste, that will mess up my borders. But if I copy, I'll edit special and hit an X, then I can paste all except borders. Hopefully you knew this trick when you were building your dashboard Otherwise, you'd have messed up your little border there. So as my business grows in sales, this interest that I'm paying on working capital grows. It'd be really nice to know how much is that affecting my business and does it even affect the share price? So I'm going to convert these to input cells, type them in as values, and put everything else after it equal to the cell to the left. And now if I'll tie 
my model to these inputs, we can find out the effect on our share price of changing these. So instead of my accounts receivable as days of sales, looking at the prior year, I'm going to have it look at row seven and have row 76 look at row six and have row 79 look at row five. And now you understand why in this new model template, pro forma practice with ratios, I calculated these as days of sales. I used the same formula that we used up here on this row. Because if we were wanting to take over this business and we said we could operate our supply chain much more efficiently, then we could reduce that days that we keep goods in inventory from 100 to 50. It would it change our stock price from 28.85 up to 30.63 and so on. If we could drag our feet a little bit and take 80 days to pay instead of 50 days to pay, that drives up that stock price. And if we could get our, we're already getting paid pretty quickly in 15 days, but if we could have them pay when they order, we could actually maybe get a negative uh, days that it takes to receive that payment where they're paying us before we send it to them. And then that raises the stock price even further. So you see the idea here and maybe have some creative ideas for what one could do with this. We can see the effects on all of our financials. Uh, the equity value per share is the easiest to look at, but we can see the effect on all of our financials from maintaining different amounts in these balance sheet accounts. Notice we didn't use any of these numbers down here. This was just illustrative to show you that it was meaningful. I guess by the end of the example, I'd, get, I'd gotten us to negative working capital. Maybe that's a bit ambitious. Maybe we'll go back to something more likely. What would control these? Let's think about the days it takes for goods we buy. If that number got too big, I'm sure we'd incur penalties. And if we got it low enough, then we may actually incur, or we may benefit from some promotions from our suppliers. So we'd want to take that into consideration as well. What cash, what effect did that have on us? If it costs more to improve that supply chain, we could at least see the value of doing so. And if we were too hard on our customers and making them pay in a very short time, we may lose customers. At least we can measure the effects of the cash conversion cycle. Thanks for watching.